The first thing you've got to remember about simultaneous equations is that x and y stands for a number. And what we are saying in simultaneous equations is that the value of x for this one over here is exactly the same for this here. And the value for y here is exactly the same as y here. That's very important because you, that's a way to remember it. That's a way to actually understand it and how we actually solve it. There are three ways in which we solve this to find out what x and y is. There's elimination, there's substitution, and there's a graphical way. I think that the graphical way is the easiest one. It's just that it takes lots and lots of time. But let's look at elimination first. So what we've got to do to find out what one of the letters are, we've got to eliminate the other one. Okay, so let's say for example, since we have got one Y over here and we've got one Y over here, we might as well get rid of Y to find out what X is. And to do that, we treat this like a sum. Okay, we treat it like uh, a normal three plus, you know, three minus five sum. And what we do, we just take away the bottom one from the top. So each one. So we've got 2x, 4x I mean, 4x minus 2x, which makes 2x. y minus y makes nothing. 17 minus 9 equals 8. And then we can find out what x is by dividing by 2 on both sides to make 4. So we've done that. We know what x is now. We know what x is. That's, that's the first bit of it done. So now what we can do, we can use this information over here to find out what y is. Okay, so we've got 4x. We know what x is. We know that it's 4. So I'm going to write 4 times 4 because in algebra, there's always a times between a number and a letter, an imaginary one. So I'm going to write it out over here to help us. So 4 times 4 plus y equals 17. So if we just shorten it, 16 plus y equals 17. Now what we do, the general cheat for algebra is we always have numbers on one side and letters on the other. That is always the case in algebra. So what we do, we can move 16 over here. So we can have the letters on this side and the numbers on that side. So we minus 16 on both sides, or you move the 16 over there, it depends which way you do it, and y equals 1. So we've got our numbers here, we've got x equaling to 4, and we've got y equaling to 1. Right, there is another way in which we can do it. We could do it um, through substitution, but substitution, you should really do that when you've got stuff like 4x squared plus y equals 17 and x plus 2 equals 4. I don't know. Something like that. Those, that's for, um, that's for, um, that's for substitution. And that's more of a grade A, grade A star topic. So, the other way in which to do it is actually graphically. We can actually plot all these points down onto this graph over here. And then, when we've got the intersection like that, they say, for example, all we just need to do is to look at the coordinates. So um, the coordinates would have been uh, 4, 1. And that's our, that's our answers. So that will be the x coordinate and that will be the y coordinate. Okay, if we do this properly, what we would do is we will replace x with minus 2. I don't like using the word substitute, I like using the word replace. So that will be, um, we will have to rearrange this as well, my bad, sorry. So that will be y equals 17 minus 4x. So we replace minus 2 with x over here and the answer would be 25. And then we will continue going through that and we will draw the line. And then the second one, 2x um, plus y equals 9, we would rearrange that to make 
y equals 9 minus 2x because in when we do stuff graphically we always have y as the subject it just makes life so much easier and so we just basically make the table over here and then all we just need to do is to look at the point of intersection where they meet obviously you do this more accurately and with axis you know I'm doing it without the axis uh, like like that some, some I don't know somehow and then you'll get 4, 1, and then that's it. That's the easiest way you could do it. I would suggest that you practice it. But that's all for simultaneous equations, actually. I'm going to do another example, so you can pause it, you can carry on, whichever. Okay, so we've got 3x minus 2y equals 3, 5x plus 6y equals 12. So, what we would do is we would think which one would we want to eliminate, which letter do we want to eliminate first and we don't have the same number of y's on each side or the same number of x's on each side so what do we do? well if we think back to fractions I know it's a bit going off, a bit off topic but if we had like 1 sixth plus 3 sixths actually no that's a bad example if I had 5 sixths minus 3 sixths you need to ask yourself why can we do this why can we just minus that and that but we can't minus 8 tenths minus 3 sevenths why can't we just minus these two fractions as we did over here it's because the denominators are not the same so what we do we make these numbers the same and an easy way to do that is to multiply all of this by 3. Okay, so we have 6y. So we would rewrite this. So 3 times 3x will make 9x. Minus 2y times 3 will make minus 6y. 3 times 3 equals 9. And then we just write the second one down. 6y equals 12. Okay. So... Now, we've got 6, we've got minus 6y and we've got 6y. What we can do to get rid of y is to add them both together. Because if you've got minus 6 pounds and you add 6 pounds onto it, you'd end up with nothing. So, 9x plus 5x equals 14x. Minus 6y plus 6y equals 0. 9 plus 12 equals 21. So, 14x equals 21. And then what we would do is we would divide 21 by 14. It's a rubbish example, I know. And the answer would be something like, um, it will be 1 and one and a half, so 1.5. Okay, so x would equal to 1.5. Now we've got this information. We can use it to find out what y is because we know what x is. We know that x is the same here as it is here. So, if we rewrite that with the newfound knowledge that we've got, uh, so if we write it as 3, three times 1.5 minus 2y equals 3, what we would do is we would multiply this together to make 4.5 minus 2y equals 3. Remember, the rule in algebra, the fundamental rule in algebra is to make the letters on one side and the numbers on the other. So we would move 4.5 over to this side, or minus it on both sides, depends what, which one you do, it doesn't really matter. So you would make minus 2y equals minus 1.5, if I'm correct. And then, to find out what y is, we half it, we divide it both by 2, so it would make minus 0 0.75 and then to make it to y and this is, the, this is the best thing about maths as well to make anything from minus to a plus all you've got to do is just rub it off, that's it 0 0.75, there you go and the answer is 0 0.75 if we did this graphically what we would do, we would do the same thing we would plot um, basically the graphic one is just 
trial and error, we are looking, we are replacing x with minus 2, minus 1, 0, trying to find out what is the right one, basically. So let's say um, we have all these numbers and I plotted them on the graph over here. I don't know how it would look like, it would look like something like this. And then we had the second one as well, which looks something like this. We would look at the intersection over here and the coordinates there to find out what the answer is. But that's just a short explanation of simultaneous equations.